This is Iceland. Nice. Bangladesh. There is a very a lot of skepticism around the videos I make, um, rightfully so. I mean, it is a pretty mesmerizing thing, and I guess it's like magic to some people, right? Like. You watch like a magic trick, you don't know how it's done, but to the magician, it's easier. Um, I would say soil color is really, really helpful. Um, so if you have like red soil, it's like Cambodia, Brazil, white soil, it could be in like Nigeria, like the car commercials. I love watching car commercials because it's like, what road in the US are they on? So how do you play Google Maps professionally? Yeah, so basically the game is it's called GeoGuessr. Um, the point of the game is to basically find where you are on the world. So it uses Google Street View and it basically just pulls random images from Google Street View. And then you get put in these random spots and you have to guess where you are. So essentially like part of the game is they just take a picture of Yakima, Washington, some round, random place, and you have to go find this location. Is it is it a certain area or can it be anywhere in the world? Yeah, you can play different maps. I like playing the world map. There is like, you could play like very local specific maps like Ventura County only. But I like playing the world map to where you get, you could put, you could be put in Indonesia or you could be put in Seattle or a small town population 300 in Montana. I have no idea how you can even do this. Like you just get some random picture anywhere in the world, but how, how do you even figure this out? Yeah, it's a lot of studying and playing a lot. Um, so basically anything from using bollards on the side of the street, learning different telephone poles in different countries, language, what side of the road people drive on, what road lines countries use. Every country has different road lines. Some use double white, some use double yellow, some use white dashed, some don't use white dashed, some have triple yellow. It's like a whole thing of like learning street lines, road conditions, um, what type of like road types, vegetation, all that, everything. But I would imagine that most countries look generally kind of the same throughout the country. So then how do you narrow it down within a country? So like the USA is one of the toughest countries really in the world to learn. It's like notoriously like one of the hardest countries because it's so big and a lot of it looks the same, right? Like New York kind of looks like anywhere in the Northeast really, um, or like rural New York. Um, so there's, you know, you can learn license plates, some different regions, like every license plate is blurred in the US, but you could still make out like different colors. So you can, you can learn like Oklahoma's what Oklahoma looks like blurred license plate looks like. So then you know you're in Oklahoma or there's different things in states specifically or different regions where like on the back of Oklahoma stop signs, they have like, um, they use their county number on the back of their stop sign where no other state does. So there's like a bunch of really niche things you learn about different states that help you pinpoint where you are so there's, it's like a mixture of that when you're, when I'm playing the rounds, like 0 0.1 second or like 0, 0.0 with 0 0.01 second, it's, it's very hard to pick up on very things like that. So that just comes down to like vibes is what I like to say. It's just kind of like you get, you pick up on the general feel and like what a country looks like and what it feels like in different regions of the world very, very quickly. So if you get shown 10 pictures or whatever, like out of every 10 pictures, how many of them would you be able to solve? Consistently in 0 0.1 second. I would say like an 80, 90% success rate. So 0 0.1 second, what, is that, what does that mean? So 0 0.1 second, it means I can only see the photo for 0 0.1 second. It's like a game, uh, a challenge I challenge myself to do um, where it flashes for 0 0.1 second and then it turns black. Then you have to like try to remember where it is. You, from anywhere in the world and you can figure this out? For the most part, yeah. And you can figure this out for the most part. So you just get a flash of an image and then you can go, oh, Karachi, Pakistan. Yeah. But yeah, you could do literally, um, there's also a lot of meta to it as well to where it, it helps you to where you have to learn what, this is where it gets really like into like the nitty gritty, but you get, you have to learn like what car Google drove in what country. Um, so like some, some countries, the Google street view car is white where some it's like, so like in Jordan, um, they use a black Google street view car where in Israel, the street view car has a long antenna on the back of it. So you also, it's less, there's also some of it where it's less of like country specific, like actual geographic knowledge and more of like learning Google street views and what car they use on Google street view. How did you get into this? So I started playing the game like very casually in like 2016, like in the back of high school. I, I had no idea what I was doing at the time. I was probably guessing like Malaysia on Mexico. And then around 2020 when COVID hit, I was like, hmm. I would kind of just want to see more of the world and just learn more about the world. I, there's a couple of people on YouTube I was watching 
that were playing the game. And I really was like, okay, you know, I think I could actually, I want to learn experience different cultures and see the world. So I started studying and then I've only been playing for almost a year now. It's been 11 months. What do you like about it? I think it gives me like an appreciation for like different countries that I don't think I necessarily would have had without, um, or like just seeing different regions of the world that I never would have known about. And like knowing that this place exists is cool. And like knowing that like there's people here, I really enjoy that process of just like learning the game and experiencing different places and seeing the world in a different light. That is really interesting, right? In the sense that because of the way that the game is formulated, you see all of the minutia and the little ways the country are different. Is that kind of what keeps, what gets people into it? The more I like study and the more like, once I unlock something like that, it's like the best feeling ever. Like there's a whole community of us. There's probably like, we have a discord of like probably 50 people where we just are sharing different tips and like, oh my God, I found a, you know, this specific tree in South Africa that's only in North Cape. And we're like, yeah, let's go. And so like we're really finding like and unlocking things like that in the pro community is really big. I think more for like the the newer audience or like the more casual players, it's just like, um, it's just a challenge with your friend of seeing who's smarter. Is it only fun though if you're really good? Like I would think that starting out, you just have no idea. Like if you showed me a picture of some random country, unless it's got the Statue of Liberty in it or the Great Wall of China, I'm not figuring that out. I don't think so at all. I, I think it's it's honestly probably arguably more fun when you don't know what you're doing. I think the the joy is that there's always something more to learn. It's not it's not like you can you can ever stop. There's like an end goal here. You'll always find something new. Google will always continue to update their coverage. You always have to adapt to different things and different countries changing. In the professional ranks, like where do you rank? I'm definitely not the best, um, which is crazy to think about. If you see my videos, you're probably like, how? There's people a lot better. I, th I also think it's like, it comes down, there's different ways to play the game and there's different, I would rank people differently based off of like, so like I, I am more of like a, a fast speed guesser where I like doing country streaks. Um, so basically it's how many countries in a row can you get where other people maybe their specialty is guessing exact speed running exactly where you are to the exact road as quickly as you can to the exact meter. Um, I would say when it comes in terms of um, like fast guessing country streaks, I will, I don't want to just give myself an exact rank, but I would say within top, generously top 25, 30. What, what makes somebody better than somebody else? Is, is it simply your experience level or how do you get better at it? It gets to a point where it's like very marginal and you start learning like people that have studied Russia, right? Like unlocking, learning different Russian like towns and learning Cyrillic. Like that's like the next step in different vegetation in Russia and like unlocking big countries. And once you come back after like three days, you forget a lot. And it's really discouraging <laughs> because like... Um, it's, it's like a language. I would say it's like a language. If it's like, if you want to continue to be good at the game, you have to, you have to continue to play it. And the less you play, the more you forget. And the more you play, the more you learn. So if I take like a week off, I'll come back and I'll be like a two X worse player than I was before. Honestly, like your visual identity and like your, the vibes you pick up on, you just lose like kind of a general feel of like guessing very quickly and intu intuitive pretty quickly. You've developed a good amount of online popularity through this. Are, are you surprised that people are as interested in it as they are? I think so. I think part of me understands why, like the, the appeal behind it, because it is so mesmerizing and it is such a, a wide net to really any culture and language and person that can relate back to, back to this. And so like, I understand that. I guess the growth and how quickly it happened is pretty astonishing. Like I literally started posting in January, like... So that's like almost 500,000 in five months, um, which is pretty absurd because I literally, it's just, this is a hobby. I still have a job. I still, um, I, this is all something in my, in my free time. I just pick up on, just do when I can. I didn't, ex I never did expect it. I'd start posting because I wanted to, I really just wanted other people to like play the game because it's, it's such like a, a privilege to play this game and to have like this access to the world on your fingertips. That I kind of just wanted to share that. Is there any kind of monetary value to say? Like, I mean, are there competitions where you can make some money? Or is this simply just a hobby and that's probably all it's ever going to be? There's no real like prize pool money behind anything here. It's, I think the most 
I've ever seen is like twenty dollars. <laughs> so it's uh yeah, it's it's actually a really hard game to play competitively too because it's a very honor code game. Because it is very easy to cheat in this game because you have Google and you see signs you can Google. Um, there's different ways oh. to cheat to where it's a, it's very much an honor code game, which makes it very hard to play competitively. There's been a lot of drama in the community around different players, but now is it really anywhere in the world? It's going to show you just anywhere randomly. I play a map called a diverse world, which is like kind of the, it's the flagship map. I would say for like professional players of like, if you want to get better, if you, the, what, the map you play on competitively and it has 62,000 locations that are handpicked by a, that are handpicked by a, a map maker. I haven't seen 62,000 locations. Um, so that is random. Yeah. I kind of understand what you mean, but like, what what is the car, Google Street View car? Like, how does that play into it? So different countries all use different cars. Like Google sends a different car to different countries and you can see some of the car on the coverage. So if you're like, if you, if you look around, oh, if you look I down see. to the actual car that the Google car is driving, you can make out like what color the car is. And if you learn what color the car is driving in what country, that also helps you pinpoint what country you're in. Oh, so like we know that Google uses a black Jeep Cherokee in France. So if you see a black Jeep Cherokee, you automatically know you're in France. Kind of like that. Yeah. Or like, yeah, like the U.S. doesn't have nowhere in the U- no car in the U.S. has an antenna on their on their car where Europe does. So if you're confused before like New York and Belgium, you can see if there's an antenna on the car. If there's not, you probably are going to be in the U.S. or things like that that you pick up on. Not in that specific scenario, but that general census. Are you ready for some harsher listener submitted questions? Let's do it. What is the easiest and hardest country to identify? I think there's two different ways I can answer this. To identify is one. Um, I think a very hard country for me to identify is I personally struggle with urban Eastern Europe, which is very specific. But so like, um, let's say like North Macedonia versus Serbia sometimes is hard for me. So both the countries kind of use the same language, have the same general feel. Really, the only thing, you know, very Europe is so is so small that a lot of the countries look the same. So, I would say, as, as far as like identifying, I would say urban Europe as as a whole. I need to get better at because it just looks so similar in a lot of the places. If you don't have language, um, and then I would say the easiest Russia. Oh, I see that. Because all that's kind of the same general area. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's also like really countries that are a lot, like I'm trying to avoid, like Kenya is really easy because the car that is in Kenya is only in Kenya. So if you see like a snorkel on the car, you know you're going to be in Kenya because it's, you can't be anywhere else because that's the only time that car is used in any country. That's kind of cheating, right? Yeah. So there's answers like that. Like obviously like Kenya, Ghana. Dominican Republic, Guatemala, like countries like that are going to be pretty easy because there, there's like meta car coverage um, that you can just distinguish where you are within half a second because of, you can see the Google Street View car. And it's only if you see that, you know, you're going to be in that country. But without that, I would say like maybe Russia. I think I could probably get pretty close on some states. Like I know that Arizona looks different than Utah, which looks different than Colorado, which looks different than Kansas. But if you show me like a picture of Rhode Island, I don't have any, I have no idea what that looks like. What's like the easiest to identify within like half a second. And then there's like where you are in that country is another question. So like Indonesia and Russia are like the two hardest countries to identify where you are within that country. Because well, one, Indonesia has like 4,000 islands or so many islands that it all looks, it's so big and it all looks very similar. And then Russia is kind of the same to where like identifying Russia, if you can pinpoint Russia and Indonesia fairly accurately, you're going to be one of the top 1% of players very quickly. What geographic feature would help you the most? Like, do you want a river, an ocean, mountains? Trees are helpful um, because there are trees that are different, distinct, distinctual. Like there's different trees in different regions that are only like, there's a tree called Piranha Pine where it's like only in one specific region of Brazil in the South. Where if you see that, you're like, oh, this is immediately, I know we are. Um, I would say soil color is really, really helpful. Um, so if you have like red soil, it's like Cambodia, Brazil, white soil, could be in like Nigeria, um, things like that. So I would say the top three for me would be soil color, trees, and just having an ocean is obviously pretty helpful because you can just see, you, can, you have a compass to where you can see. Having an ocean is, is helpful on identifying 
where you are in the country, less of like what country you're in. So if you have an, if you have if you know you're in Indonesia and you have a country to your west, that might be more helpful than if you're in the middle of nowhere in like mainland or inland. Has there ever been one that you were just like, nobody can figure this out? Like nobody knows what this is. Yeah, a lot. So there's like different maps to to play their harder difficulty where it's like very rural and you can play no car as well to where you can't, see, there's a, a game where you can play no car where you, you can't see the Google car, which makes it a lot harder as well. Um, and then when you, when you put that to that difficulty, there'll be a lot of pro players that, you know, getting past 20 countries in a row is going to be, I think that's like the world record on that map. Whereas, you know, other maps, easier difficulty and the records are like 600. This, <laughs> This question is either brilliant or slightly offensive. I'm not entirely sure if you're either going to laugh or be annoyed, but do you ever feel like, man, this is a little nerdy or are you just like, this is what I like? I think I embrace it. Um, definitely. I, I, I do think it's like, it is pretty nerdy. I, I, I do I do kind of take that. Um, yeah, like it definitely is nerdy. I think I embrace it. I don't think I care though. Like it's just, uh, there's just a whole community of us that are kind of also I'm nerds. Maybe others won't admit it, but it is it is a fun passion that's very unique, and I think I understand that, um, and I accept the, the the name. Have you ever introduced yourself as a professional Google Maps player, trying to maybe get a good foot in the door? You know, like you know what I'm talking. about. Yeah, I feel that. You know, typically that's not my lead in. Um, I, I don't think I've ever. It's come up in conversation before, and like. You know, then it's like a they whip out like a Google Maps, like, oh, can you, can you, what's this country? Um, that, that's happened quite a few times. I do feel like it's a thing that people want to test you all the time. Yeah. There'll be, I'll get recognized in public sometimes. Um, and there'll be people that are like, you know, where's this? I'm like, oh, here we go again, like Singapore, you know, Lithuania. I'm like, because a lot of people don't like, there's a very, a lot of skepticism around the videos I make, um, rightfully so. I mean, it is a pretty mesmerizing thing and it is very easy to cheat. So there is skepticism and people, I, I don't, I don't fault people for you know, wanting to test me at all because it is quite the, quite incredible, honestly, if you, in the, without knowing, I guess it's like magic to some people, right? Like you watch like a magic trick, you don't know how it's done, but to the magician, it's easier, you know? Do you have a hard time watching TV or commercials because you're just constantly trying to figure out where things are? All the time. Dude, I'll be with, I can't consume any content anymore without like, um, like I was watching what it was Borat. I was watching Borat the other day and it was like supposed to be like what I think Kyrgyzstan or something like that or Kazakhstan somewhere in the stands. And there was a Romanian pole in the background. And I was like, like a Rom Romanian telephone pole. I'm like this is supposed to be not in Romania. Um, so like there's different reasons, like things like that, where I'm like, right, come on, you know? Um, and then if like, I, if I'm just like scrolling through TikTok or Instagram or something, I'll be like, oh, okay, that's Greece. You know, it's very, I also get like all my DMs on Instagram are like, where's this, where's this, where's this? So I'm constantly challenging myself or it's, it's always like a, like the car commercials. I love watching car commercials because it's like, what road in the U S are they on? Where do they usually shoot most of those? Because they seem to use some of the same roads. I think a common trend is actually Norway. Uh, I see a lot in Norway. I think it's just because of how beautiful the mountains are um, or Switzerland. Um, there is a lot in like the Western U S I feel like as well, like, um, like Colorado kind of in the, in the, in the Rockies. What country has this made you want to visit the most? Like when you see all of these places and you're like, Oh, I have three. I have top my top three. I'll go. I mean, number three is Singapore. I really want to go to Singapore. It just looks like a beautiful. Um, and then two is Iceland. I think, that's just for obvious reasons, just beautiful. And then I think my sleeper number one is um, Northern Thailand or like Laos. Um, there's a city in Laos I really want to go to, Bang Vieng. It's like a beautiful, as beautiful scenic as rivers going through it. It's a beautiful city I really want to visit. Um, it's like a, it's high on my bucket list. Is there a country that's ugly? Like this does not seem like every time you see it, this does not seem like a tourist destination. It's funny because there's what's also beautiful about the game is that you'll get countries like that um, where it's like, this is a, a dump. And you're like, I, this is really tragic type thing. And then you'll also be in the same country and like, this is beautiful, right? So there's, there's two ends of it, really. Most interesting way somebody has called you out for cheating. 
Or like, what's the most ridiculous theory where somebody's like, oh, he's faking it and he's doing this? Oh, man. There was one. Oh, my God. So when I was doing one video, this is this is a pretty common, this is a pretty funny one. I would do this to like try to me- memorize the photo, like just look down and like, just like really try to visualize the image. Yeah, picture it in your mind. Like picture right. in my mind um, because it, I only saw it for 0.1 second. And people were like, oh, he's looking at a tablet on his lap. He has a phone to reading off what country he's in. I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to visualize the image. Like, and so like the next one, I made sure I looked up and like closed my eyes rather than looking down. Cause like so many people are like, he's looking at his phone on his tablet. Um, I think, it, I think what's a really a funny one too, is people assume I memorized every single image, which I think is 10,000 times more impressive than what I'm actually doing. Uh, how has this skill benefited you in real life? I think it bleeds into a lot of like my, like it's, it's really just, it keeps me kind of committed to something, um, which I think helps. And then there'll be times where I honestly think, you know, it's helped my memory. It's helped my, you know, my like visual identification, which is like helpful. I think in times of like in the work I do. Um, so I don't think generally it's like, it's been anything life changing, but it's definitely, there might be more things that I'm just not aware of too. For people who are listening, basically, I've picked a random Google image and showing you this, like looking at this picture, how would you go about figuring out where it is? So the two immediate things, or my eye immediately goes to license plates. Um, so license plates is big, or is a huge portion of the game where you have to learn what license plates are. Um, so like this one in particular, you can see um, we're looking at a garage here with a car parked and you can see there's a short license plate with somewhat of a, a colorful license plate. And you're going to get those mainly in the U S or Mexico. Um, sometimes Australia, the Europe, European union all uses like one blue strip left aligned on their license plate. So we know we're not going to be in Europe here. Now, obviously with this architecture and the general feel, we have palm trees. We know we're going to be somewhat, you know, coastal ish, desert ish. So um, those are two main things. And then if we, if we were to pan, we would probably see like a, a sign uh, on the right side of the road, which would hint we're driving right rather than left. So that would like eliminate it from Australia versus US. Um, immediately though, it is kind of like neural feel like, oh, this feels like the US. But if you really get like nitty gritty into it, um, you could also, we could use a compass and we could see that the sun is in the South here, which means we're gonna be in the Northern hemisphere. So that also eliminates something like uh, Australia here. So there's a couple different, those were the, be the couple different techniques I would use to define this location. Holy fuck, dude. Like, I don't notice any of that. How about this one? Okay. So we're definitely, you know, in the U.S. again. So this is this is a different one because it's just, um, it looks pretty, this, you know, looks pretty distinct. These pine trees in the background here, though, are very common, like Oregon, Washington, um, above this house right here. So like, and maybe Vancouver, B.C. area is where you're going to find mostly those trees. I would have gone maybe northeast here if it wasn't for those trees, honestly, just to explain, I guess, maybe a thought process is that the U.S. is one of the only countries that uses transformers on their telephone poles. So you'll see like on the top of the telephone pole in the distance here, um, in our north, like east, there's a transformer at the top of it. Um, and that's really just the U.S., Canada, that really uses those, a couple other countries too. But that's another, like very small things like that you have to you have to pick up on in like wooden poles. But I probably would have gone Oregon, Washington here, maybe B.C., um, but probably more Oregon, Washington, just based off this this pine tree in the background, this tall pine tree. So in the game, are you, are you just trying to identify the city, the country, or are you even trying to narrow it down to like a street location? Yeah. So there's two types of ways to play. I am a country guesser. So um, I like going for speed and like going for the right country. So I would have just plonked. We like to call it plonk. We just guess in the middle of nowhere in like Kansas there just because I'm speed running countries to where I don't have the time to like figure out the con- like what state. Oh, I'm just guessing and I'm going to the next round and seeing how fast I can get many countries in a row rather than getting the exact um, location. There is people that will try and speed run getting that exact street in Washington, but I am honestly very bad at that portion of the game. There's people, I would not even put myself in top 100 there. Um, so top 200 really. Okay, so well, so this is what we like to call unofficial coverage. So it's just a photo rather than like street view. Um, oh, so it doesn't count. This is so like it doesn't is. necessarily count, um, but a couple of interesting things here. I recognize we can, we can use this. Um, okay. I actually didn't see where it said Warsaw there. 
But we did see that the publisher had a Cyrillic name, so I almost said Russia. But then I looked above it, and I could see the name of the park was Lezinki Park. And that L in the first letter there, that is a Polish L. And that's actually only found in Poland, uh, in Polish. So if you see an L with a slash through it, that character is only distinct to Polish. It's not found in any other languages. Going back into some of the questions, like where do you think that this goes moving forward for you? Yeah, um, I'm kind of just, you know, I want to continue playing the game and get better. Like there's so much I have to learn. I want to continue seeing the countries and learning more about the world. Um, there's so much I can learn. I'm so excited about what I have to learn. Like I'm learning Australia right now. Um, it's like super fun. Um, and then I think beyond just learning and I think there's an, ex- you know, I want to actually see them in real life, you know, um, not, the amount of times I've seen Malaysia's telephone poles, I would love to see them, you know, in real life as well. So are a lot of people who play, are they extensive travelers or is this kind of how they travel? It's actually there. Oh, I don't think so. This is our way of traveling. I, I think there is maybe some people that do travel more than others and, you know, that's maybe that's where they get their specialty. Um, generally, the best players in this game are like 15 or 16. Like the world's best players are all like sophomore juniors in high school, which is really interesting. What's coming up? That's all the questions I got, man. What's coming up next for you? Definitely. Yeah. So I'm continue. you know, if you want to learn more, I, I post tips videos on my TikTok at GeoRainbolt at on Instagram as well at GeoRainbolt. If you want to see me speed around countries also there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm really excited. There's a, I'm starting with 5K. It's called 5K. It's a, when you find the exact pinpoint location, because um, that's a max score you can do, I guess, here on. Um, so a big thing I'm doing more recently is finding music video locations. So that's my biggest next feat is I have like a list of music videos I'm going through. So if you follow my TikTok, you'll, you'll be seeing a lot more of those here soon. Oh, wow. Oh, so you can like look at it and like, okay, where was that actually shot? Finding where the music videos were filmed. Yeah. Do they seem to do most of them in the same places? Not just music videos, but like, okay, yeah. it's this the, location again. There's the amount of times videos. I've seen, I've had to avoid music videos because they're just outside Los Angeles is a million times. Um, it's like always in like a desert or like somewhere in, near Los Angeles. So I, I go more for like, if it looks more European or you know, Asian, but you got to switch it up. You should you try switch it up. 80. Try some 80s music videos. I found a, who was it? There was one band that filmed all their music videos in Sri Lanka. And I was spending, it was from like the 80s. I spent like hours. I'll have to, it was, it was some popular band, but I was, I spent like hours trying to find um, a music video in Sri Lanka, but I couldn't because. It's not Journey or anything, is it? Who was it? I have to find this real quick. Because it was someone really popular. Um, And it was, I was like, I need to find this. Duran Duran. Oh, that makes sense. That seems like the kind of band that would shoot all their videos in Sri Lanka. Have you ever been lost? No, not not really lost. No, I mean I've been. Uh, are you talking about like on a on a you're driving and you get lost? Or are you talking about lost like in life? Let's do in life. Do you feel? Have you ever felt like you are lost in life? Oh, absolutely. Probably say mid twenties. You know, probably the most lost I've ever been. But. Uh, uh, then it all worked out. It's, it's you know, it's kind of funny for me. It was all kind of full circle. Had no idea what I was doing, where I was going. And then now here I am, two kids and a wife later and a mortgage. Do you feel like you found your purpose? Like you're going to be on this same course for the rest of your life. I actually think it's a little uh, a little frightening to think about that this will be, you know, like this is it. Like this is my life. And though it's a great life, like this is it. I mean, I, I'm not... I'm never going to play professional baseball. I'm never going to go in space. Like, I'm just going to be a middle class American. And, uh, you know, and and that's going to be it. Like, like, this is my life. I don't know if you've given up or if you're being realistic. I mean, I I would just say that my ambition for uh, 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 to achieve my dreams is 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 kind of by the wayside because I'm, I'm trying to be realistic. Right. I have two children who are young. I have a wife. I have a honey do list that's three pages long. Uh, you know, I mean, those are just things now. I, I can't, I can't spend eight hours a day working out to, you know, to be like The Rock anymore. Not that I ever did, but you know what I mean. Okay, wait. Now, how? But how old are you? I'm gonna be thirty-five in September. Do you think? Do you think that that's early to give up on life, <laughs> or do you feel like you're about right? 
Uh, I mean, I, I, I think people give up sooner. Uh, I, I would say I'm kind of late to the game only because uh, I didn't have any real responsibility. And what I mean by that is, you know, I had a job and whatever. I, you know, I paid taxes, but like I, I wasn't married until almost 30. Didn't have children till 31. I mean, I had a good chunk of adult life there where I was just kind of floating through space. And then you look back on it and it's like, did I really utilize every minute that I could have? I think everybody thinks like that to some degree. But the reality is, is like, you pretty much have your fate decided for you in my mind, right? Like, we were never going to be professional basketball players because we weren't born with that kind of genetics. And I think that to be super successful in things, it's really not that much about hard work. I think you have to get lucky. And whether that's having connected parents or just stumbling into something or just plain old like getting lucky, it's just not going to work out for most people. And then I think that that's how you and I are both in that stage of life in which we've come to the realization that, you know what, like this is this is probably your life. Like nobody's making you president or an NBA all-star anytime soon. You're probably going to just be a middle-class normal life. But I yeah. think also that if that was to change, we're at the same age where like, ooh, did I really want that in the first place, right? Because you always lose something, right? Suddenly we're gifted and we become movie stars. Well, you're not going to be spending much time with your kids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, at our age, and, and you're a little older than me, you look back now uh, on, on like kind of what you just said, uh, on changing things or something were to change overnight. And it's, I don't know if I even want that, you know, being older and knowing what all goes into it. I'm perfectly fine with what I have and where my life's headed. But another, like what I said to start this uh, segment, is it's, it's kind of frightening thinking that like this is it for the next 40 years. You pretty much have a like a span of your life between, I would say, like, let's say 30 to 60. We're like, all right, it's like running on a treadmill. You're getting going. You got a lot of energy. You're not at the end. Like, this is the grinding period from like 30 to 60 is the grind. And like, all right, same shit today. <laughs> but I think that's the challenge. I think ultimately that that is the difficult thing about everybody's life is that you have to find a way to make all of that monotonous bullshit special. The only time I've ever been lost is when I got drunk and fell asleep on a highway. <laughs> oh, man. Lucky you Not didn't. driving, walking, not driving. I was walking home and I got lost and I ended up on the side of the highway and I decided to lay down on the shoulder. Not a great decision on my part. Wow, that is... Yeah. That might be... I, I didn't know that story. That might be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard you say. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. When I think back of it, when I think back to it, I think I was 18 or 19 in Hayes, Kansas, wasted, oh trying to walk home, end up on the side of a highway in Kansas. It's a two-lane highway. And I was just like, you know what? I'm tired. Wow. I'm gonna lay this, I'm gonna lay down on this shoulder here. I would imagine there weren't very many lights, so you were probably in the dark. Yeah. Jeez, man. Wow. Well, yeah, that was pretty dumb. I used to have the nickname walkabout because I used to get really uh, inebriated. And just walk away. My friends have no idea where I was. And eventually came to the point to where if I just disappeared, no one gave a shit. Uh, I would just walk for miles and have no idea where I was. See, I've always felt that once I, okay, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, one being the lowest, once people hit like an eight or a nine, that's like in the real messed up period. As soon as I get eight, nine, I just go to sleep. <laughs> Other people always seem to be able to like exist in the eight, nine, ten realm for a long period of time. Where me, I'm just like, I'm going to sleep, I'm going home, done. Like as soon as I hit, as soon as I go from seven point nine to eight, I'm going to sleep. For some reason, when you just said like you know go to another realm, I I, I for some reason thought of the underworld and Stranger Things, which would be terrifying as a drunk person. But uh, are you watching the new season? No, actually, I uh, I stopped watching after the first season, so I'm going back now and starting over, uh, and I'm going to try to catch up all the way to the season. So, Oh, yeah. Well, L dies. Th thank you. L? Who's L? I don't even know who L is. Isn't that her name? You mean 11? I don't know if it... 
Yeah. The only thing I always remember is when I was really excited to see the <laughs> first round of the new Star Wars, like the hope returns or the force awakens or whatever the one is with Ray in there. Yeah. And I was like waiting to go see the movie and then I was driving down the highway and somebody had a bu big bumper sticker that said Han Solo dies. <laughs> I was like, I, you fucker. But also well, I respect it. I respect it. I mean, listen, we kind of, we kind of talked about the movies last week, man. Top Gun is, oof. Oh God, I'm sick of it. I'm tired of hearing about it. I know you are. Everybody is, but yeah, people are, it's, or people are still going to go see it. Because it's one of those things that I don't think that people actually care about it. I don't think that people actually like the movie that much. I think it's popular with an age range in which they don't have anything else to talk about. Like 35 year olds and older go see the movie and talk about the movie endlessly because they don't have anything else to talk about at this stage in your life. It's just like what we talked about about being lost in life. We've entered this stage where we have all these things going on and nothing going on at the same time. Anyways, is it, uh, you know, it's the first show of the month. Does that mean what I think it means? No, it's, oh, wait a minute. No, last show was actually the first show of the month and you missed that opportunity and I wanted to see. I didn't think that you were mentally prepared. Were you mentally prepared for it last week? Well, because that would uh, technically went out on June 1st. That would have been the candle of the month uh, episode. So you dropped the ball. See, Literally I, your one responsibility. See, I don't want to take credit for, I mean, yes, it did come out June 1st. However, this was the first show we're recording in June. So I think I get I think I get a pass on this one. I think that you have to do shout outs first in order to give those people their proper credit and then candle of the month. All right, because I, I, I have probably my favorite candle of the month that I've ever showcased on this on this program. So I'm wow. really super excited about it. Please be like the wussiest named candle in the world. Periwinkle what? missed. Why? Why are you so angry? Like, why does people love the candle connoisseur? That is, I'm John not Schultz. saying that they don't. The outlaw candle connoisseur, like that. <laughs> All right, wow. uh, let's give some shout outs so we can uh, uh, move on here. Oh, so you can just get past these people who put their time into listening to us, so you can go to your candle of the month segment. What <laughs> a jerk! I'm not a jerk. I just, you're making this awkward. I just want to get, get through this. So I just want get... you to show people the proper respect. They took well, you know time what? out of their day. You can invest time in trying to make sure that you do a good shout out. I'm going to go slow and I'm going to be articulate. Right? And this is going to be Wait the a best. minute. Wait a minute. I just saw you back up. Are you wearing like an Under Armour shirt right now? No. Back up. No. Let me see it. You're wearing Are you a, wearing an Under Armour you're shirt? You're wearing a Darth Vader shirt. Yeah, a little bit. Why? <sighs> oh my god. What? It's How far shirt. down your arms does that go? Uh Dude, I don't know. you got those sleeves are not long enough for you. Yeah, they are. They're Come fine. on. Fine. They're not even halfway down your arm. I didn't Look even where my shirt's are. in your Darth Vader t-shirt. It's not an Under Armour shirt. I'm not dressed like I'm about to go work out. I mean, listen, we, we've talked about this several times on the show. This is what I like to wear, and you like to wear Darth Vader t-shirts. It's fine. I don't understand. I wear t-shirts because they're like $9 at Target because everybody stopped wearing them. <laughs> so then I can swoop into the bargain bins Phew. and get me some good deals. You're a grown man who's not working out, just sitting around in Under Armour shirts. It's not true. You don't That's know what I'm doing. That's not appropriate. You, you have no Are idea. you going to work out today? I'm I'm gonna clean stuff out of my basement, which is a workout. Thank you very much. First of all, it's eight o'clock at night. You're not gonna do any of that. I am. When do you think I get to do it? I'm just telling you, man. Every time I see a glimpse of you leaning back, that shirt is too short in the sleeves for you. I, it's fine. It's it's. I'm in my house. It's not. It's it's fine. If what are you, the fashion police there? No, Lord Vader? but I'm I'm just trying to watch out for you, right? Like, look, I, I'm a little bit too old probably to be wearing this shirt. I'm going to have to start turning it inside out. But that's what I do with T-shirts when I'm like, oh, I shouldn't wear that kind of T-shirt anymore. So I just turn it inside out. I mean, I, I wear these shirts all the time and I like them. So. Yeah. Okay. No, lots of people, dude. Lots of people get, why don't you wear a headband too? Just walk around the house like you could have a basketball game at any second. Just oh carry the ball God. around with you. These are, these don't, uh, all right. I'm just give. saying, lots of most people do not put on Under Armour shirts and then just sit around the house watching TV. I, I mean, what? Do, 
I, I have nothing. I, I mean, it's what I, it's what I right. enjoy. Okay. And you know All what, right, everybody out there, I hope you wear what you enjoy. All right. Don't listen to bullies like Nick. I'm just pointing out facts. All right. Here's some, here's some shout outs. Uh, as we try to get past that, Jake Royer, appreciate you. Uh, Dante, Dante Weasel, uh, Jacob Cochran, Jake Dunback, uh, Wyatt Perry, Ben Myers, Sarah Selseth, Quaid Young. Kind of like the name Quaid, by the way. Uh, you don't hear Nick, that a lot. Nick Zwart and Nick Sherman. Appreciate all of you for uh, checking us out last week. Uh, man, I tell you, we, we're a storm. We're a storm to be reckoned with on old TikTok there. Over a million views. 26,000 followers. We're better watch out. Uh, Amber Heard, we're coming for you. Who's Amber Heard? Oh, my God. You, you oh, do not. that whole thing. Jesus. Okay, let's just skip by. All right. All right. Are you ready for candle of the month? I am. I've been. So this is a candle. <sighs> I didn't buy just one of this candle. I bought wow. five of this one candle because it is amazing. It's refreshing. Not you know. It's it's. I, there there aren't enough adjectives to describe how great this candle is, and it's by uh, a company called Goose Creek, and it's called Cool Raindrops. It's a three wick candle, and uh, if you head over once again, not getting paid any money for this, but if anyone from Goose Creek is listening and wants to send us some samples, won't won't, won't say no. Uh, but you can check it out right now. $12 on sale and uh it's it's awesome. The the cover art on the candle is amazing. And uh it's it's a three wick, so it's gonna burn for at least twenty four to forty eight hours uh continuously. And it's just awesome. It's just a it's just a good can Goose Creek has some very top quality candles. How does your wife feel when she sees you walk in the door with five of the same candles? So I, I mean it's fun. I mean I kind of equate it to when my wife, I would gets... be walking the other way. Like if, if I was a woman and you came into the house with five of the same candles, as you walked into the door, I would be walking out the door. It's like when my, like when the uh, I don't know when the U.S. you know when the UPS or the FedEx driver comes or or Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's for her, but one out of every twenty is my my candle boxes, and and it's fine because I get them, I take them into my little candle area. And no one messes with me. Not even the kids. I don't even know what. <laughs> do you really have a candle area? Do you have like a stockpile? Do you, this is John's candle section, like where you, like where <laughs> other people would have their t-shirts. You've got like, oh, these are all my candles, and nobody touches Dad's candles. I mean, I used to be on like my buffet. Like I have a little buffet in our kitchen or our. our is that what it's room. called? It's uh, called a buffet. How I mean, how else do you say? Do not say buffet. I don't even. I've never heard of anything in the kitchen being called a buffet. Well, I, I mean, it, I, I misspoke. It's technically in our dining room, but it's it's called the buffet, I believe. Yes. What is? I don't. I literally don't even know what it looks like. How is a buffet different than a dining room table or like the other table that you have? Uh, <laughs> I mean, a buffet is usually long and rectangular, usually five to eight feet in length. You know. Anyways, you're just messing with me. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. Is that the is, yes. is that the most of one candle that you've ever bought at one time? Like, have you ever gone five deep mm. in a candle before? Man, we have some interesting conversations on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. There, there's one other scent uh, from Bed from Bed Bath and Beyond. I'm sorry, uh, Bath and Body Works. Bath and Body Works that I that I buy. Thank you for of. correcting yourself, please. Yeah. I always get them the two mixed up, but uh, it's it's some Christmassy one. I can't remember the name of it now, but uh, I'll buy as many of that as I can because it's awesome. I can't believe you found yourself lost in life. That's so surprising to me, guy. <laughs> Why I, didn't you go into candles? I just like every. I just like everything, man. I, uh, I I I just like every. Like I'm an eclectic person, man. I like candles. I like music. I like books. I like you know. I like. That's the problem. Maybe that's why I'm lost in life is because I've never just stopped and focused my attention on one thing. Oh, that's the same thing for me. I've never really, I've always been interested in a lot of different things and so never really dedicated myself to one thing. Yeah. But man. you could do this with candles. Maybe it's <laughs> not too late. You could be a candle salesman, candle reviewer. <laughs> I 
I would review candles. I mean, why? I mean, uh, I, I I almost just said I love it, but I, I kind of do. I do kind of love candles, man. I really do. I do. I can tell. I clean out my basement because we're getting it demoed soon, and I came across a candle that uh, smelled like bacon. You want to talk about a weird scent, but it smelled, okay, smelled pretty good five years later. All right, uh, All right. let's see a couple of uh, bangers for you. Uh, it's grilling season. What's your favorite uh, item to grill? A hot dog? I think grilling is incredibly overrated. I think it's really probably... If I had a choice between grilling and putting something in the microwave, I would grill it, but only after really thinking about putting it in the microwave. I just don't think things are that great grilled. I'm not impressed yes. with the grill. I'd much rather like, oh, I'm grilling a steak. Why don't you put it in the oven so you don't dry it out on the grill? Oh That'd be lovely. God. You're in. Oh. Hmm. Ask any chef. Look up what Gordon Ramsay's steak recipe is. He's not grilling it. He's pan searing that thing and sticking it in the oven. Uh, grilling is a waste of cooking. It's a waste. People do it because they like the right, aspect right. of being outside, being around their friends, doing that kind of stuff. But grilling as a way to cook is completely overrated. Dries things out. I'm just gonna move on here. Uh, it only it only When's gets the last dry? time you had good grilled chicken. You want to uh, put your chicken in the oven? Much better. Oven, toaster oven, fry it, microwave it. All better than grilling. You know, you know why you have dry chicken from the grill is because you don't cook it right. Most people don't. Well, you can grilling you never... is of hard. Uh, grilling is the hardest method of cooking. I would say to get right, and most people screw it up. So that you're better off just putting it in the oven. Well, listen, anytime you want to have some of my meat, I'll be glad to give it to you. I'm still, still in shock from a man who orders five candles and then sits around in an Under Armour t-shirt. Uh, it's, and you know what? I hope there's somebody Now, don't you see this, how ridiculous that is? I hope there's somebody oh. listening to this podcast that is doing the exact same thing that I am. And they, they're sitting here right now going, that Nick is a real asshole. That's what's amazing to me about the world is that no matter how you weird you are, there's at least probably a million other people in the world who are doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, I mean, we highlight the extremely eccentric people. Like, I'm probably pretty normal. You're pretty normal wearing a Darth Vader t-shirt at 47. Don't age me up. <laughs> fucking rude, right? I don't trust the normal people. Those are the ones that are like, ooh, you got to watch out for somebody who's normal. What's the better kind of uh, a, a beer to have? An after uh, yard work beer or a shower beer? I have never had a shower beer. I've heard good things about a shower beer, but I've never had one. And I've never had an after yard work beer. Gee. <laughs> you ever had like an after yard work anything drink? Like cocktail, some whiskey, anything? Shower because I'm all dirty from yard work. All right. Well, the next That's time the you... difference between you and me. That's the difference between you and me. When you're out there doing yard work, you're just putzing around in your little Under Armour shirt it's not with true. your probably self propelled lawnmower. If you're even doing your own yard work, I'm out there grinding. I'm mowing. I got the self propelled mower, the one that piece of shit that you can get for like 50 bucks that spins around and makes that sound. I'm edging. I'm pulling weeds. I'm power washing the deck. You're out there just having a good lazy Sunday. I'm fucking that's, working. That, that's that's not true at all. Actually, actually, I time myself. Thank you very much to see how you fast do? I can do it with my two children usually somewhere around me. So okay. you're welcome. Good. And good. do you edge? I Are edge. I weed whack. I trim the trees if they need trimming. I go oh, into the garden. Once a year. I don't weed. try to throw something like that in I have there. a lot like, of oh, trees around here. I got a lot of bushes. Nobody's got that many trees that you got to do it every single week when you cut the grass. I'm don't just come giving in here examples. With that. Once a year, you, know, you got to do it. My wife has a goddamn nature center out back. So like the weed whacking is difficult because I got to, you know, there's a million plants and pots you got to go around. So don't, don't come at me, son, about yard. How work. long does it take you? How long does it take? I can usually get my front done in about 45 minutes. My back's going to take me about an hour, an hour and a half. It usually takes me a good two, two and a half hours to do my complete yard. 
what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Dude, you either you have either allowed your household to become a circus by having all this crap in there that you've got to be doing something. You've mm-hmm. bought like a giant palatial estate that you are not equipped to take care of, or you're taking like a break every five steps. Because I can do my whole yard in 35 to 40 minutes, and that's edging and leaf blowing with a kid running around wanting to help out. I don't See, know what you're doing. Leaf blowing. That's a ridiculous amount. You're spending two and a half hours every week or every other week on your yard. I mean, it's probably pretty much every week, to be honest. Wow. I'd be, I, mean, I would move. <laughs> I would make some changes in my life because that's it's, a lot of wasted time. And that's why you don't have any time for things. It's not that bad, actually. It's, I, I mean, I have a, I have a pretty good sized yard for where I live. So I'm, I'm okay with how long it takes. Me. Oh, here we go. No, I'm I'm not gloating or anything. I'm just saying I, you know, it's really my wife's fault. Like it's like a maze back there trying to get stuff done. See, I have a deal with my wife that after I cut the grass or do anything yard work related, she has to then after at the end, she has to like, you know, brush up against my <laughs> special regions and be like, "Wow. Wow. Cut okay. the yard and it's that big?" Wow. That's Good. Good nothing happens you. after that. That's just the oh, whole deal. She just, yeah. No. No. Nothing. No. I was going to ask you your thoughts on uh, you know gas prices and blah blah blah. I mean that's what everyone's talking about. It's you know it's it's over five bucks a gallon here in Michigan. It uh, it's terrible. It doesn't seem like it's going to go down. I'm on the verge of maybe thinking about buying an EV. Uh, uh, not that I'm against EVs, but I think it would be quite a difference in vehicle if I went from what I have now to just an EV only. My wife's car is an electric vehicle, and I wouldn't notice any difference. I do think that people have are starting to change their mind. People like yourself, they're like, I'm not driving no electric vehicle on my way to get my Budweiser six-pack, pick up my cousin at the penitentiary. I'm not doing that. Well, th- right? thank you. Thank you. My cousin's doing well, by the way. Thank you. Well, is he really in jail? Again? No, I don't. Well, oh, I got not, not yet. Not right now. <laughs> oh, fuck. But anyways, I, I, it's just, I, I think it's like anything new, right? Uh, everyone's a little skeptical of it at, at first. I do think that it came out as like kind of a stereotype at first. Like who's driving these kind of cars? And it was a certain kind of person and a certain kind of other person didn't want to be anything like that certain kind of person. So there was a slow pickup in the idea of being able to change over. But Mm -hmm. whatever they were like 10 years ago, I mean, I don't think they're the same now. All right. So our top five is top five condiments. What's your number five? Oh man. So this, uh, this list was hard. I mean, hard. Uh, for me, but my number five is going to be garlic sauce. Okay, like uh, specifically, Odd choice. like like shawarma garlic sauce, like you know that that kind of garlic sauce. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's <clears throat> delicious. I just can't think of anything that I personally put that on and like, ooh, give me the garlic sauce for that. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, it, it's it's shawarma, chicken, uh, potatoes. Just, just stuff like that. It's really good. Obviously, obviously, you have to like garlic, but it's if you do, it's fantastic. Um, my number five in our list of top five condiments: chocolate sauce. You're gonna have ice cream without chocolate sauce on there? Yeah, bro. I'm just gonna go on to my number four, uh, which is uh, miss. So hard for me to pick this, but I, I'm going to go with honey, I guess, is my number four. Honey? Yeah. What I, do you put honey on? So, right, I, I kind of had that when I was thinking about my list. I, I thought that, like, what you just, the face you just made, like, honey. What, then I think about I put it on oatmeal. I put it in cereal. I put it on yogurt. You know, I put it, uh, like, on chicken, uh, in different marinades. I mean, I use honey a lot, a lot more than I thought. How much you weigh now? Uh, three sixty-seven. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, All right. <laughs> yeah. What's uh? W- what's your number four? Salsa. Salsa is my number four. I could go higher. Like I could potentially push salsa all the way up to number two, mm-hmm. but I don't think it has as much utility as the other condiments on my list. But I could, if somebody was like, "Hey, salsa number one." Mm. 
I wouldn't argue with you. I, I would not argue with salsa anywhere on this list at any number. So my number one is kind of a cop out, but we'll we'll get to that. And in terms of like, you know, the top three being kind of just, you know, things that you use all the time. But my number one, I think, is a cop out. But we'll get to that. Uh, my number three is going to be uh, ketchup. You're putting ketchup at number three. I am. I don't, I don't know if you're. you're gonna, I don't know if you're going to agree with my number one, but it's considered a, a, a condiment. So that's ketchup I, I, it's it's good enough to be in the number three i don't have mustard on my list either well ketchup always goes above yeah. mustard nobody's yeah. gonna put mustard above ketchup i'm just i'm just saying but yeah ketchup uh ketchup is uh my number three it's a strong number three strong that's that's a ridiculous opinion to put ketchup at number three i feel like that should be a lot higher uh my number three is ranch okay see i I have a love hate relationship with the ranch. That's why it is not in my top five, but I, it should be, it could be my number five, but I would put it no higher than that. If I was going to put it on my list. Now, how do you have a love hate relationship of ranch? Uh, because I ruined it for myself. The same thing with marinara sauce. What did you do? You uh, drinking it? Yeah. Different bets throughout my younger impressionable years that just made me never want to, taste any of that ever again wait a minute you were drinking marinara sauce yeah How much did you so, drink? long story short uh i was in college and somebody bet me that i couldn't drink like six of the 32 ounce containers of marinara sauce like in in, in an hour and uh i made i made them a bet that uh, if i could do it in a half an hour i got double uh, double the money. So I, how much I think, did you get? I think I ended up making like 74 bucks. That is not, it is not enough. No worth it at all. I mean, that's, uh, that's what a hundred. I mean, that, that's like almost 200 ounces of marinara sauce. I did in a half an hour. I don't even know how that was possible, but I can tell you, I threw up immediately after and it looked like I, like I had died. I mean, it was obviously like blood red and I was on the third floor of a dorm of a dormitory and I puked just over the side of the stairs. And the next morning it looked like somebody had died when you walked down the stairs. I don't think that, are you sure they're 32 ounces? I don't I mean, think I could drink six 32 ounce things of water in yeah, half an hour. I mean, I, that's what I remember. If they, if, I mean, if they weren't, they were, they were between 20 and 30. I mean, they could have been 24, but they were big. God, even if you went, okay, let's assume the benefit of the doubt. Even if you're going a 12 ounce can. Oh man. I don't think I, that's still a lot. Sure. Yeah. God, dude. I bet that was disgusting. How could you ever have marinara again? I remember what I did was it kind of separates in water. So like I was drinking water with it, like trying to like just keep it going and keep it moving. And after about the fourth container, I was like, I'm done. And then, but I got to keep going, right? Because I, I think I had like 11 minutes left or 12 minutes or something. And I'm like, I can do this. So made $74. What'd you do with that $74? <laughs> I think I spent it on beer the next day or something. How'd you feel the next day? Fucking terrible. But still, that's <laughs> that's not the worst I've ever felt from like a food challenge. I mean, I, I did the milk, the milk challenge. Remember that one where it was like no. drinking 64 ounces of milk in 20 minutes or something? Uh, that wasn't good. I did a crave case challenge, the white castle crave case challenge. Uh, how many you could eat in 12 minutes. And I did like 28 and a half out of the 30, uh, which that was the worst, um, you know, just stupid shit like that. The ranch thing was, uh, that was four bottles of ranch in 10 minutes. And I did not complete that. I got through about trying to drink it. Yeah. I got, I got through about two and a half bottles and, uh, my buddies thought it'd be funny. Like, one bottle was like uh, like light. The other, like then there was a regular, then there was like a spicy one. And then there was like, uh, I don't know, like a chunky one or something. And uh, it was just all terrible. I actually feel like throwing up just listening to this. Well, you're welcome. Uh, all right. Am I, are we at my number two? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to I can't make... believe you feel lost in life with no, all these good decisions that you made in your past. <laughs> uh, listen, they, you know, they all got me here. Wherever that is, I don't know. Uh, my number two. Uh, and I hate to put this as not number one, but uh, like I said, I think my number one 
is a very good number one. So my number two, hot sauce. Hot sauce is my number two, too. Yeah, it's... I think that's a good place for hot sauce. I have no idea what your number one could be then. Mm. Because that's a ridiculous statement to like, okay, maybe he's going to put hot sauce as number one, which I could slightly understand. But having ketchup as number three and hot sauce as number two, I, what do you, what's your, are you going to say something stupid? Are you going to be like sour cream? What are you, <laughs> I'm going to get upset. I'm getting myself ready to be upset. Okay. That's fine. My, my number one, you got to go with it because it's, 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 it, it, we use it pretty much all the time. We don't even realize it. But uh, that's going to be relish. You have a jar of relish. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's not my number one. My number one is salt. Fucking ups- salt is not a condiment, you asshole. <laughs> it is. I, I looked it up on six That's a different- spice. That's it's, a spice. It's It's something that goes on or in food. It's Don't considered give me this a condiment. Don't stuff. It is. I'm. I'm sorry. It, it is. That's a spice. It goes on. Uh, okay, so I, I actually read several things on this. It's. It can also be considered a condiment, whether you want to put it in with actual condiments or not, because it sits on the table like other condiments. It is there for you to use to season or spice whatever you're eating. Like you just don't eat salt. Like a condiment is something that you usually just don't eat on its own. It complements something, right? That's what salt does. It complements whatever you put it on or in. I just, look, I understand that technically somebody may be able to justify salt as a condiment, but I, nobody thinks of it as a condiment. Uh, my number one is ketchup, which is and should be the default number one condiment because of its usefulness. Maybe it doesn't have the taste of some of the other condiments, but overall, the usefulness and ubiquity Ooh, of wow. ketchup. Yeah, I know. I paused for a second. It was such a good word. But the usefulness and universality of ketchup has to make it number one. I'm not sure that's a word, but we'll go with it. Uh, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I I have no no, uh, complaint with that as your number one. I mean- Breakfast or ketchup is there at all meals. Ketchup is there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And maybe dessert if you really wanted to figure out a way to do it. What's in your honorable mention? I mean, I I wrote down a few here, so I'll just run through them quickly. Uh, mustard, guacamole, uh, Caesar dressing, uh, sugar, olive oil, mayonnaise, teriyaki, uh, and sweet and sour sauce. What? Teriyaki. Is that how you say it? I I think so. How how do how do you say teriyaki? It? Isn't it teriyaki? It's T E R, not T A R. No, it's teriyaki, teriyaki sauce, not teriyaki. Yeah, ter- teriyaki, teriyaki. Teriyaki. Sauce. Have you been going around this whole time saying teriyaki all over the place to people? I'm afraid I. I'm afraid I have. No one's ever said anything. No. Not that. Not to my face. <laughs> oh, they have behind your back. <laughs> 